It's 8.30 a.m. in Divar, a quiet island tucked away by the Mandovi River in India's party capital, Goa. 25-year-old Hyacintha Agyar, a biologist by qualification, is getting ready to go to work. Unlike many of her friends, Hyacintha is not forced to sit behind a desk computer all day. Instead, she's on her bike, going home to home in Diwar, attempting to build the People's Biodiversity Register. Mandated by India's Biological Diversity Act of 2002, the People's Biodiversity Register is a compendium created by local governments in consultation with their community. It catalogues the knowledge and availability of local biological resources, proving to be the foundational step towards species conservation in the region. So this knowledge, which has been transferred to generations in the form of folklore, it's just oral tradition, oral knowledge which has been passed down. Uh, very few have, very few have made attempts to record this in paper, so that you know there are records that are maintained of this knowledge. The very purpose of a biodiversity register is, in the first place, to maintain records of whatever is like is likely to be lost in the near future. So all the information that is that might just cut off and get lost is being tapped down, is being written down in words and, you know, maintained in the form of a biodiversity register. Hyacintha's <laughs> first stop this morning is the Harmalkar residence. Narayan Harmalkar and his wife Nivedita, who was the former head of the village, are helping Hyacintha document Divar's indigenous communities. You know how many households approx Tari's Tari is mostly more than uh, in uh, all over Diwa. Mm. All, all over, meaning Golti Navili. Golti Navili. Yeah. More than maybe 500. 500. Houses. Houses. 500 people will be. 500 people oh. will be definitely. And houses, Kitli? Houses are more, not more than 50. 50 houses. The river island of Diwar, home to 5,000 goans, is a fragile estuarine ecosystem evolved on land reclaimed over centuries from marshy mangrove swamps. Native to this ecosystem is a wide variety of medicinal herbs, formerly undocumented, but passed down through the generations to village elders like Rajni Vidyadhar, whom she is meeting today. After taking a picture to identify the herb, Hyacintha's primary task is to note down its local name, identify its scientific name, gather information about its cropping season and its uses. Her next stop is the farm of another knowledge holder, Nanda Kerkar, who used to grow the indigenous Korgut variety of rice, known to thrive in saline water in estuarine ecosystems. Now hybrid species have largely replaced Korgut, promising larger returns and a secure livelihood. Till today, mm. if we have any Korgut, it is very good healthy. Actually, I am having a field of Korgut. But uh, for the last 40, nearly 35 to 40 years, I could not um, sow it. Her pooling of knowledge is already leading to important questions being asked. Like what can be done to revive Korgut rice? Or how can chili seeds be marketed better? Hyacintha is one of the youngest persons in the country to head a biodiversity management committee. She was chosen by the local government in 2017, when the Seven People Committee was established to create a platform for inclusive and people-powered knowledge exchange about the ecosystem they are part of. We are in the times when every young girl who is qualified wants to look out for a job or an opportunity where she gets a stable you know, government job, is basically in Goa. And here is a girl who has chosen to use her knowledge for documentation of people's register and to save this traditional knowledge for the posterity, to preserve biodiversity. So actually speaking, we are very proud of this girl and we wish that many girls get inspired by her action. Meeting 
working with young girls and boys at her alma mater when they are done with their classes for the day is often Hyacintha's last stop on the road. Once off the road, she gets to the tedious task of keying in her findings of the day. These will be presented at a Gram Sabha or a forum of all the adults in the community to fill in any gaps in knowledge. Once the Gram Sabha approves of it, it's pushed forward to the state level authorities who will now be better equipped to prioritize conservation activities in the region. There are over 250,000 gram panchayats or grassroots level governance zones in India, each one as diverse as the other. Hyacintha's work will make sure her community's needs are not overlooked when policymakers sit down to draw a plan on how best to tackle our ever-changing environment.